American colleagues would present the alternative scenario um, no, for the United States. Я бы хотел подчеркнуть, что Россия сделала дважды несколько спасительных шагов для спасения американского государства. But let me uh, remind that historically Russia twice saved the United States. Это в 18 веке Екатерина Великая отказалась послать русские войска для подавления освободительного движения. First is when uh, United uh, the, the, the Catherine the Great uh, refused to send Russian troops uh, to assist Great Britain um, in the Revolutionary War. War. Uh, в 1861 году в 1864 две русские эскадры находились одна в Нью-Йорке, вторая в Сан-Франциско. Uh, two squadrons of the Russian ships between uh, 1861 and 1864 patrolled east and west coast of the United States. Они защищали прежде всего территорию США от британского флота. Protecting the fledgling uh, uh, American states from uh, British uh, 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 navy. Я напомню, что славный Вашингтон был сожжен британцами в 1812 году. Я думаю, Аляску отдали Соединенным Штатам Америки в борьбе Российской империи против Британской империи. Это был жест доброй воли. And it was a big gift. It was a gesture of goodwill. Поэтому мне кажется, что сегодня основной противник и России и США это транснациональная новая британская империя, центр которой находится в Лондоне. I suggest that both Russia and the United States unite uh, unite together against uh, against uh, British transnational capital and large corporations. Мне кажется, должны в американской элите победить идеи господина Овиса, вице-президента США при Рузвельте и господина Рузвельта. Um, I believe that the American elites is not too late to revert to the idea of Mr. Wallace uh, under uh, the 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 Wallace Wallace uh, vice president vice president under President Roosevelt and President Roosevelt. И мне кажется, что сегодняшний наш диалог будет содействовать укреплению и взаимопонимания и выработке общих моделей внутри США и внутри России. I hope that the dialogue that we can start today would be beneficial to both countries in a way that we can develop these policies and, and, and the means and ways to, uh, to, to get out of this crisis. Спасибо большое за внимание. Thank you for your attention. Я потом с удовольствием отвечу на Please don't be shy asking any questions um, after the discussion. Но единство хочу сказать, что я очень хорошо отношусь к Соединенным Штатам и не хотел, чтобы мои мрачные сценарии это терроризовали. Again, uh, let me underscore uh, that uh, I personally respect and love this country, great country, and nothing in the doomsday scenario is a sign of disrespect or or my personal view of the United States. disarmed as I begin uh, dismantling this fairly preposterous scheme by the charming man that we have met tonight. I'd like to give him a great big American welcome. That's right! That's right! That's right. I, come, I come to you really just kind of uh, overwhelmed by the, uh, the, the, the material that I have to work with tonight. Um, and, and I'd like to just get started right away by saying that on page 31 of this very interesting book, The Collapse of the Dollar and the Disintegration of the USA, Dr. Ponari issues this appeal. No one, he says, has been able to bring forth convincing facts to contradict my forecasts, not one political scientist or powerful American analytical center. 
Now, I can understand why political scientists might have problems dealing with Dr. Panarin's arguments, but perhaps a modest historian, a modest Harvard man, <laughs> yes, there were three modest people in my class at Harvard, and I was by far the most talented of all of them. <laughs> well, perhaps I can offer a few arguments against Dr. Panarin's Hydra-like thesis about America's decline and fall. And as far as a powerful American analytical center, well, I figure there's no harm in giving this American analytical center a shot at these arguments. So, let's talk about the predictions themselves. Dr. Pernard predicts that the United States will break up into six different sections, each of which will gain at least one foreign protector, with most of the Midwest and the Great Plains going to Canada. Now, we must immediately ask whether anyone would notice. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, uh, in, in, in fact, uh, it's a fairly large piece of territory. Uh, he predicts that most of the South and the Southwest would go to Mexico, California would go to China, and the East Coast would be part of, as he described, this um, protectorate uh, overseen by uh, transnational capital in the United Kingdom, in, in London. Uh, and he predicts the consolidation of Russia, the emergence of a Euro-Asian state, uh, with the ruble as its primary currency, and uh, all of this is supposed to happen by the end of 2010, so hold on to your hats. It's going to be an exciting 14 months. Now, having read his book, seen his filmed interviews on YouTube, and so on, my impression of Dr. Pernarin's work, particularly his contemporary analysis, is that he takes fairly outlandish ideas, states them with a straight face, and waits to hear the shocked reaction. The shock reaction follows. The shock reaction can then be used to underscore his predictions. In other words, to prove that his idea was correct. After all, if so many people are upset about his predictions, it must mean those predictions are convincing, right? Well, wrong. And the reason that's wrong is predictions are right when they're right, not just when they're provocative. And so, I would like to note to you that just uh, a couple of weeks back in Russia, Dr. Pernar made the very bold prediction that, in fact, by November 1st, we would see a lot of negative results in the American economy. Now, leaving uh, aside the fact that November 1st was a Sunday and that most Americans were sleeping off the effects of the Halloween parties, <laughs> the reality is that on November 2nd, we saw reports that U.S. manufacturing activity rose in October at the highest rate in three years. On November 2nd, we heard that construction spending is on the increase. Construction spending, by the way, creates jobs, the jobs that Dr. Bernard so boldly said there is no way to create, and the Obama administration, for example, sees no way to create. And spending on durable goods is up. So I'm not saying the U.S. economy is in great shape. I'm saying that Dr. Bernard's predictions of the continued downturn of the U.S. economy look to be incorrect. Now here's another odd thing about Dr. Bernard's approach to these questions. He seldom bothers to explain why something is going to happen. He simply says that it's going to happen, and then we sit back and we think, my God, what if that happened? 